I hope you can hear me and that the webinar is starting all right. My name is Rebecca Damot. I'm advisor for European funding, especially Horizon Europe at Lux Innovation, Luxembourg um, Innovation Agency. And we are also a team of NCP National Contact Point for Horizon Europe. And in this context today, we present you this webinar on gender in research and gender equality within the context of Horizon Europe, because we have uh, received a lot of question requests and we see that um, you participants to Horizon Europe feel a bit confused about these two uh, notions. So um, this webinar will aim to bring you some answers and maybe tools and tips on how to deal with gender in, in general in Horizon Europe. Um, so the agenda is the following. We'll start with the introduction, a um, little peek at the policy background, then answering the question, what is gender equality plan? What is gender dimension? And there will be a time for Q&A at the end. So on the right of your sc screen, you should have um, a chat um, discussion and a question Q&A button. Um, please put your questions under the question button and uh, feel free to use the chats also. Um, I will look at them at the end, not in between. Other um, information, this webinar is recorded and you will have access to the recording. The slides will not be shared and um, I believe I went over all the points. We were uh, we wanted to to discuss there. So briefly about uh, national contact point for Horizon Europe within Lux Innovation. Our role is to support Luxembourg applicants to um, navigate the Horizon Europe program, so to find transform the ID into a project to find the relevant European funding and opportunity to identify partners for the collaborative calls and we also offer technical support so um, in the form of trainings or proposal review legal and financial or webinars on on specific points um, like this one today so um, if you are not familiar with horizon europe it's the um, european research and innovation funding program for seven years starting in 2001 it will go until 2007 27 uh, 2021 2027 and with a budget general budget of uh, 95.5 billion for these seven years with a strong focus on um, climate change related project for which 35 percent of the general budget is dedicated so the aim of horizon europe is um, to be the tool to facilitate the implementation of the European Twin Transition, which are driven by the European Green Deal and the um, strategy shaping Europe's digital future of the European Commission. And there is a strong, um, um, the, the program is also fits within the international agenda of the um, SDGs. So this is the general overview of Horizon Europe and in the um, environment of gender, the program is also uh, embedded within the strategic development goals, especially the strategic development goal five, gender equality, the fourth, quality education, the tenth for reduce inequalities. And um, in terms of European um, strategies from the European Commission. We have this striving for union of equality um, strategy for gender equality. It's a five year strategy. So within around next year, there will be a, a review starting to update it. And these um, two aspects are what are defining the gender necessity, the gender requirement within Horizon Europe. There's third um, policy, which is the um, European Research Area Policy Agenda, which focuses specifically for the research um, world. So 
Horizon Europe. And one of the points within this policy agenda is the point five, action five, which aims at promoting gender equality, fostering inclusiveness within research, the research area in, in Europe. And um, there in this policy, under this action point five, it is clearly stated that Horizon Europe puts gender equality as a cross-cutting principle and it aims at eliminating gender inequality um, by addressing unconscious bias and systemic structural barriers and also that gender equality plans are one um, of the most um, significant policy of the European Union to uh, promote gender equality in research and innovation. So this, this policy came after the uh, drafting of um, implementation of um, Horizon Europe, but it's um, string, strongly reinforcing the importance of gender equality uh, within research and the uh, importance of the gender equality plans, which are part of Horizon Europe and part of the question of, of today. Um, so within Horizon Europe, Gender equality has been promoted as a criteria, sometimes an eligibility criteria, and we find the question of gender at three different levels. So one is um, the question of gender equality plan, having a gender equality plan in place. Um, the second point is the integration of the gender dimension into the research and innovation content. And the third point where gender is um, tackled within Horizon Europe is the importance, the need to have an increased gender balance um, among the research team. So without further ado, we'll start with the gender equality plan, which is an eligibility criterion under Horizon Europe. And um, as a definition, the gender equality plan, it's a set of commitment and action that aim at promoting gender equality in an organization through a process of structural change. And this idea of process of structural change is very important and we we'll need to, um, in a way, be shown into the gender equality plan. So it's not just a document that you will need to um, redact, it's a document, a strategy with action plan and the idea of follow-ups, monitoring, making sure that the um, actions you foresee to um, include more gender equality within the organization are working and, and thus, um, if needed, that you adapt them. So it's a long-term process. It's not a one-shot. Oops, wrong button um, here. So the gender equality plan is a criterion, eligibility criterion, but not for everyone under Horizon Europe for now. It's an eligibility criterion. So it means that entities which are public bodies, research organization, higher higher education institution um, based in a member state or in an associated country, they must have a gender equality plan by the time the grant agreement is signed. So, um, um, yeah, private profit entities, SME, NGOs, civil society organization and other um, organizations that are from non-associated third countries do not need to have a gender equality plan um, by the time the grant agreement is signed. But when you apply on the funding and tender portal, um, first when you register the organization, if it's the first time you do it because you haven't done it under um, Horizon 2020, there will, there will be a um, question if you have a gender equality plan and if it fills in the uh, different um, pillars, four pillars, and then you have five different um, thematic that are nice to have or help shape the gender equality plan. So when you register the entity, it will be asked for you if you are 
public body, research organization, higher education institution from the member state or associated country, you would need to say that you have, have it in order for the in entity to be registered on the funding agenda. Then during the proposal phase uh, on the parts A, each um, partner of the consortium has to say if they have the gender equality plan in place already. So you don't need it um, for applying for the proposal, but you need it by the uh, time the grant agreement is signed. But if you have already a grant agreement signed now and you apply um, by the end of the year or next year, there you should already have your gender equality plan. Um, these are the mandatory requirements that you will need to have in, in the, to, to, to make the gender equality plan be um, valid in the eye of the European Commission. So it needs to be a public document. It needs to be on your website and signed by the um, higher representative of your institution. Um, you do not need to have the entire plan with all the specific actions in the most detailed um, aspect online, but you need at least to have um, something a document that shows that you have taken the steps, you have a strategy, and it is valid by um, the higher institution, the higher um, um, person in, in, in the institution. Um, also, the gender equality plan must foresee that you have dedicated resources to implement the plans and the different actions, the monitoring, um, I will show you an example afterwards. The dedicated resources, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have one person dedicated to that. It can be several persons that are in charge of several or one of several tasks regarding the action. So you can um, share the work among um, the people working within the institution if you don't have already a gender equality officer, for instance. Um, the plan also needs to um, be based on facts and data, so you need to collect data and monitor the progress you are doing um, regarding the execution of the actions you have decided upon. And um, also you need to foresee trainings and capacity building for everyone and also the um, management part of the organization. So that's this training and capacity building, um, it refers also to the fact that the gender equality plan is a living document. Um, document. It's a, it's a living action and not just um, a one page put there because you have to do. And it really needs to um, be about the transformation of the institution. So um, this idea of transformation change that um, was mentioned in the previous slide. Um, yes, this is a bit more in detail um, what you need under the four different pillars, um, as I have just explained. Um, also under the data, the gender equality plan, the idea of the gender equality plan re requires that you um, report every year in your annual report on the uh, gender aspects and the advancement of the gender equality plan. It's a bit like a corporate social responsibility on, on the side of an organization where you report every year how you are, you are doing regarding the engagement you have taken. Um, next to these four pillars, there, is, there are five um, thematic aspects that are um, recommended, so nice to have, but in a way they shape the gender equality plan, so um, they will help you also to um, draft this document. And one of these thematic is the work-life balance and the organizational culture, 
um, the gender balance in leadership and decision making, gender equality in recruitment and career progression, the integration of gender into the research and the teaching if you are a um, well, higher education um, center. And um, also last point could be about how, what are your actions um, in regard to gender-based violence, sexual harassment in the entity, what do you do to um, curb this and to become a gender-friendly place? Um, so to keep in mind and to summarize, the gender equality plan will need to be tailored to your organization. If you Google online or use any other browser, you will find several um, gender equality plan already since it's mandatory since 2022. So you can find um, from universities, for instance, all around Europe, but you cannot copy it. You can inspire, get inspired because they have an action that is very innovative for you and you would like um, to replicate it, but you cannot just copy and paste. You have to tailor the gender equality plan to your organization. So it means you would need to start by an analysis, what is in place, what is, how is, how, how are things going, what needs to be addressed and tackled um, to also trigger the structural change in the organization. It's important to um, use objectives that are smart. Um, and um, yes, well, have the plan focused on triggering a transforming in transformation at the organization level. So um, have monitoring points and um, review the plan on a regular basis in order to make sure that it is still relevant and that it is going according to um, what you said you will do in the first place. Um, the gender equality plan do not has uh, can be in your national language. It doesn't need to be necessarily in, in um, English. So um, you can, here in Luxembourg, you can have it in French, in German, English, Luxembourgish. These are national languages. You don't need to translate it into, into English. And um, also one important point. So when you register the entity on the funding and tender, and when you do the um, part A of a proposal, you self declare that you have a gender equality plan. And in the view, in the mind of the commission, it's considered as an official statement that you have the gender equality plan in place. In truth, you have until the signature of the grant agreement to have it. So you have a bit of free room if you um, haven't had the opportunity to, to work on one yet. So um, since it's an eligibility criterion, it means that if public body do not have a gender equality plan by the time the grant agreement is signed since 2022, um, and when the commission will do audits, if you do not have one, um, you could, your entity could be um, um, put away, put, could be, um, ah, sorry, my English is uh, going away, but the entity will not be part of the consortium anymore. So the, the, the commission can terminate your participation in a project because you do not have a gender equality plan. The commission will check these by uh, conducting random audits. So they might contact you tomorrow because you are a public body and say, okay, we want to see your gender equality plan or they have maybe checked your website and say, we haven't seen your gender equality plan. Can you please provide it to us and then work with them on um, doing the changes needed in order to fit under the um, criteria for being eligible. So it's very important um, that your entity as a gender, as a public body work on having a gender equality plan. Um, we haven't heard yet of audits, but 
the Commission has informed us that this is the way they will proceed. So maybe when we will hear about it, when we will know more, we will um, of course keep you informed. But so far, that is the only information we have. Um, we are also very happy to help you with the gender equality plan to review it, to make sure it um, ticks the boxes if you need. So don't hesitate um, to, to get in touch as well. There's one last point. Um, if you already have a strategy, gender related strategy in place, um, you do not necessarily need to um, work on a gender equality plan if this document um, respond to the points, the four pillars mentioned earlier that are mandatory for the gender equality plan. Here I have an example from the um, London College, University College London, about what they say about the gender equality plan. So they commit to the gender equality and the requirements of Horizon Europe, but they have an Athena Swan certification and um, thus the gender equality plan for them, it's achieved, um, published, visible through this Athena Swan certification. So they do not have a document called gender equality plan on online, but they have more through this certification. So this is, if you have something already um, that is considering gender, it's important also for you to maybe not double do the work, but to check that the certification you have covers the gender related aspect the Commission um, requires under the gender equality plan. Um, so this is the example I wanted to show you from EATRIS, the European Infrastructure for, for Translational Medicine. Um, their gender equality plan is online, so you can find them on their website. Um, and you see the table of content, they just uh, introduction methodology, five different goals, monitoring, evaluation. And one very um, nice aspect in this gender equality plan they have published is the way they will measure. So you can see they have the measure, the timeline, the targets, indicators, and who is responsible. And you see there are different people responsible with a different uh, time allocated to, to, to the task. So they don't have one person responsible for gender equality. They probably haven't had the need to hire one person just for the gender equality plan, but they have uh, shared the task under um, different people within the organization. So um, if you are looking for example, I really highly recommend you to, to have a look. It's very short document and um, quite explanatory by itself. Um, there are also several resources um, to help you with the drafting of the gender equality plan. So there's a guidance document from the Commission, the um, European Institute for Gender Equality, EIGE, has a lot of um, guidelines to support you, webinars. And then there's um, the European project, Supera project, which has um, several methodology um, accessible resources for you if um, you want to work under a participatory approach to design the gender equality plan. So these documents, there will be um, the link to these documents will be put into the chat um, during the course of this uh, webinar still. Then the second most requested question under Horizon Europe, gender dimension in the research innovation content. What is it? What does it mean? Because it's a requirement by default, while the gender equality plan is a requirement for a certain type of entities, this gender dimension in research innovation count content, it is for absolutely everyone. And um, you will not see it in the 
proposal on the horizon 2020 you had in the proposal a phrase something like um, the gender dimension is very important for this call on the horizon europe it is not written anymore but you can find sometimes gender dimension does not apply to this call if you don't have it if you don't have a reference to gender dimension it means that you need to take it into account and even if it's written it's not mandatory this is a tip um, explain why gender dimension doesn't relate to the proposal and the thematic you are working on. Have a little something saying we will not target the gender dimension because we work with um, fusion of metal and it's quite a neutral material. So there's also confusion with the question gender dimension, gender balance, which one is it? It's both that you need to have. The gender dimension, it's the analysis and the taking into account of the sex, gender, intersecting factors in the design and delivery for the research and innovation content of the project. This requirement, you will find it in the methodology part of the proposal, um, where if you look at the um, proposal template, it is clearly written um, that you need to address the gender dimension within your project. You will also um, find it under the capacity of participants and consortium as a whole, where there you would need to explain how the consortium is able to um, take into account the gender dimension of the research, what kind of capacity, knowledge, experience you, you have and you bring in the project that will be helpful to tackle this um, requirement in the proposal, in the project afterwards. Gender balance is also very um, important and um, it's a ranking criterion and it can make the difference between top ranking proposal with the same core. Gender balance, it's the balance between women and men in the research team who will implement the project. And this will be um, fill, filled in in the part A of the proposal where you have to um, fill in the um, research team. So you have to say um, which researcher will be part of the team from your organization participating in the consortium project. And there you have to say um, if it's male, female, and I think now we have the other category. But um, when you work on a project within a consortium, consider enlarging your um, participation, your team that will apply in the project. Consider having an equal um, share between men and women also in the entire um, people participating in the project from all the in institutes and, and entities participating in the consortium because um, if we have two top ranking proposals that are 45.5 the um, proposal it's not the only um, aspect but the proposal with with the highest um, score on the uh, gender balance has more chances is more likely to be funded than the one who has um, lower score on the gender balance. So um, on the gender dimension in the research and innovation, so in the project, it covers the gender. So gender is the social cultural norm, identities, and the relation that shape feminine masculine behaviors. Um, these are complex. These are cultural aspects as well. Um, so this is one part that you have to tackle um, in the project. The sex, it's the biological characteristic. If you have male, female, and with the um, intersex also, now with humans um, considered as important, and you have hermaphrodite with the animals. Also, if you do a research based on animals, not only humans, you need to consider um, male, female, intersex. Uh, I'm afraid, sorry, in that, in that case. 
And the other important aspect are the intersectional factors, which are um, the, the race or ethnic origin, the age, socioeconomic status, sexual orientation, disability, um, and you combine that with the sex and the gender and you um, obtain the, the personal group experience and social opportunity that can influence the discrimination and inequality that these people encounter. So it's not just the biological sex that you need to take into account when you do the research, it's also the um, social and cultural aspect of it and other factors such as the race, ethic, ethnic origin, the age, um, the socioeconomic aspects, disability. So it's a very broad and all encompassing dimension. Very um, important to, to not miss that point, to not just focus into um, distinguishing between men and women. It's, it's more complex than that. Um, the reasoning why gender dimension is important is because um, it adds value to the research in terms of excellence and creativity. It also helps to have a better understanding of people's need, behavior and attitudes um, to, towards um, technology, for instance, and it helps to develop a project, a research, an object, uh, um, that is suited to all people. So that's the end of your project, the result, it will be, it can be um, implemented and used by everyone. It's not just a lab invention, it's something that is useful for the society as a whole in all its diversity. And um, it enhanced the societal relevance of research innovation if the end result of the uh, research is targeted to the people who will use it, then these people will be more likely to use it because they see and understand that it is for them. So I have some examples to uh, make it maybe more clear also that you understand the importance of having this gender dimension taken into account um, in the research and innovation. So very simply, for instance, the melanoma mortality. The men in general have a higher risk of death compared to women when we talk about uh, melanoma, so skin cancer. Um, this information that men have 34% more risk of dying from this cancer than women, we can have this kind of information only if we um, do the research differentiating between men and women. In that case, it's only a sex differentiation, but it's um, health um, related. I guess there could be more, but you have a first, first example. Second one, more um, related to the environment, there's 29% greater probability of forest genera genera regeneration being very good with community with um, community forest institutions that have all women executive councils than other community forest institution. So this is taken from um, a, a report about um, forest regeneration led project in Latin America and the end result of the different project is that if the projects of regeneration in um, the uh, local societies, communities, is if these projects are led by all women, council, the projects are higher in uh, the chance of succeeding than if they were by men. So there, without um, the question what contributes to the positive factor of um, a project on forest regeneration, um, for it to succeed, what contributes to this success um, if the research hasn't, didn't look at um, the gender dimension, this is an information we would not have had. 
that more women on the council equals a better chance of the success of the project. Um, also, another example is the importance of understanding the sensitivity of female and ma male marine organisms to climate change. Um, for instance, I just read preparing this webinar that because of the warming up of the ocean, for instance, sea turtle, they become more female than male. And this is also the result of um, researching well, the influence of climate change also in the gender of the uh, tortoise, turtle. Not this one, this one. I have two more examples um, taken from the European Commission, but I think everyone is more or less aware of them, especially this one, the question of gender and AI. Um, it's been very controversial um, on, on different aspects, but for instance, facial recognition of uh, by um, artificial intelligence system. This kind of system have difficulties um, recognizing women and persons of colors. So the origin of the problem is the way the AI is um, put together and trained. Um, so there we see the importance of um, the gender dimension and having maybe more research into training the AI to be neutral in the way and, and more encompassing in the way it um, recognized does the facial recognition. There has been also controversy about the AI being um, racist or uh, becoming very against women in 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 the language it, it uses. So these are very important aspects in order also to develop tools that are um, relevant for the whole society. The last example I have is about the smart mobility um, and the importance to have projects um, that work for everyone, especially for people with disabilities, for instance, or restricted mobility. Um, it's something, an aspect of our society that is often missed when talking about the gender. Um, research might focus on the use of buses by men versus women, but there the aspect of restricted mobility is forgotten while it is um, an important aspect that can prevent people to have a seemingly normal life because they cannot, for instance, take the public transport because it's not um, designed for them. So these are some aspects of gender dimension. Um, if you have questions now, I see that there are some in the chat. You can also use the um, question tab and I will try to answer them. If they are um, too tricky, I might need to come back to you. Um, so someone had an issue with the slides, but now it's, it works. Um, are the audits about having a plan only or can it extend on the effectiveness or actual implementation of the plan? Um, we don't know exactly. I believe it is about, it would be about having a plan already because it's mandatory since 2022. And um, so it's been only one year that the gender equality plan is mandatory. But since, depending when the audit will take place, for instance, if the audit takes place next year, you should have had one year of implementation of the plan plus an annual report already where you were to um, evaluate a bit the progress made regarding the plan. So this might be taken into account also um, within the audit. We don't have um, feedback information on the audits if it has even started, but 
I would not play the game. We have the document and we wait to see if we have a notice to see what it is about and uh, play the game along and start already trying to implement the plan and reporting and monitoring on it. Um, does gender balance really is really taken into account from part A. Um, EIC program is um, is different than the um, Horizon Europe collaborative courts for about which I uh, referred to. So, um, but even you're sitting there, the um, a citation that the proposal with the same final score will have priority um, if there is um, a better gender balance among work package leader. So gender balance will be taken into account also on um, on the EIC and uh, on the question of the team if it is relevant, if there is um, if it is relevant, of course. But this is especially true for collaborative calls. So under the uh, clusters, research innovation work program, uh, WIDERA work program, and um, the uh, joint undertakings, so partnerships under joint undertakings, because they follow the rules of Horizon, Horizon Europe. Um, I don't see any more questions, so I would guess that it has been very clear. Um, in, yes, in case you have questions coming on later when you are in the stage of writing your proposal or um, developing your gender equality plan, do not hesitate to contact me and uh, we can discuss it together and um, also within the team, we can help you to understand and, and um, create or answer your questions regarding these different aspects. Uh, last round, no more questions, no more discussion. So I thank you all for your attention. Um, the recording will be available at some point, um, also on the YouTube of Lux Innovation, if you need to go back to it, if you have questions, don't hesitate. And I wish you all a very nice and pleasant afternoon. Thank you for joining us.